Hey, this is Russ. Yeah, I'm still inside. <laughs> yeah, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> still got the water too. Yeah, this cough never goes away. I think it's, it's how long has it been with me now? It's over a month and something. Five weeks? I don't know. It's been so long, I can't remember. So, what are we going to talk about today? Well, uh, you know, Christmas is coming up. People are buying things now for uh, gifts. So, I was thinking, you know, um, <clears throat> are you buying yourself something? <laughs> are, you, are you buying something for uh, friends and relatives? Yeah. Well, if it's e-bike related, what are you buying? Yeah, I want to know. Put a comment. So, uh, I think... A popular thing this year might be uh, suspension seat posts. Yeah, you know we talked about um, on the last video whether um, new items from from bike companies are coming out and whether the the new ones will have uh, full suspension bikes. Well, I kind of thought about it. I said, you know, what if you already have a bike? <laughs> I mean, are you going to feel like you're missing out? So yeah, I think. If, a suspension seat post might be something that would be good. So if you're buying something for somebody, maybe that would be good. Now, here's the thing with suspension seat posts. <clears throat> Hold on, starting up already. I'm thinking uh, you need to find out what the diameter of the seat post is. Yeah, not all of these seat posts, not all of these seat posts are going to fit inside every single bike. So you got to take a look at it. Now, uh, if the seat post you're looking at buying is a smaller diameter than the opening on your bike for its seat post, that might be okay, okay, because you can buy a shim. They actually sell uh, shims where you can actually adapt the size of the seat post into that larger hole. Now, if it's the other way around, then you got a problem, <laughs> right? If your seat post... Uh, is a larger diameter than the opening of the seat post opening in your bike, then, then you can't do it, of course. So if you plan to buy a suspension seat post, either for yourself or for somebody else, you got to find out what the suspension seat post diameter is and what the suspension, what the standard seat post height on that bike is, okay? Now, I have um, the Suntour uh, NCX seat post. Magicycle was uh, kind enough to give me a couple of those. And I had them also on my um, U-Free bikes, too. So uh, I like those very much. I think they feel really good. I have one also on my, um, my uh, electric bike company bike. I don't think it says Suntour, but I, th I have a sneaking suspicion it is a Suntour. Looks exactly the same. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I really like the feel of it. Many of people have told me I needed a suspension seat post when I first started uh, the e-bike part of this of this channel, and um, I kind of like yeah, I don't need one. I always stood up on the on the pedals, you know. Uh, that's how I always rode a bike, you know. As a bump was coming up, I stand up a little up on the pedals, so my butt isn't sitting on the on the saddle because. Without the suspension seat post or a full suspension suspension bike, you're gonna feel it in your butt. <laughs> so, <coughs> yeah, see, I'm telling you, it's terrible. Uh, so, <laughs> I finally got the suspension seat post, and yeah, I, I like them a lot. So, yeah, or if, if you don't have that, if your bike is full suspension, that's fine too. Okay, that's a good thing to get. Okay. What else would be a good uh, gift either for yourself or for somebody else? Well, I, I think most of our bikes come with uh, rear racks nowadays. Not all of them, but a good chunk of the bikes have a rear rack or a re at least a rear rack option. Front basket, okay? I always like front baskets. You, you'll notice that on a lot of my bikes, I have front baskets. Now, front baskets are a little different. Uh, not everybody like it, but it sure comes in handy. You know, if I'm transporting something, throw it in the front basket, you know, yeah, it, it works out. I even put my, my tool bag there sometimes because, you know, I carry a second battery many times on my bike and that's strapped on the rear rack. So I have no place to put the, uh, the tool bag. I stick it in the front basket. Okay. Now here's the thing to know about front baskets. Once, once you put something as heavy as my tool bag on that front basket, it kind of throws the whole feel of the bike off a little bit to the point where you, you don't feel as balanced sometimes. That's because my, my tool bag's so heavy, all right? Now, but if you're carrying something else that's lighter, 
Uh, sometimes uh, Mrs. Wright and I go grocery shopping, and yeah, without the front baskets, I don't know what I'd do. Because <laughs> we throw a lot of stuff in the, in the front baskets. Okay, The U-Free bike had a um, uh, front basket and a rear basket, so having both, it's even better. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier to carry everything around. You know, it got to the point where she was not even caring what uh, bike she was riding, because she knew I had two baskets. <laughs> so <laughs> she threw everything on my bike. It's, you know, it starts to get a little, little wacky then. So it's a little unbalanced when you have that much stuff that you're carrying back with you. So, but yeah, front basket, that might be an option. Okay. Or you can do with basic things too, that maybe you don't have yet, but you should, um, a uh, biking glove, <coughs> terrible, not the glove, the cough. Okay. <laughs> uh, a biking glove. Yeah. I wear a biking glove all the time. Why? It's because I look cool. <laughs> no, it's because in case you fall, the biking glove will protect your your uh, your palms so you don't end up getting uh, all burned up. You know, because instinctively you typically will throw your arms out to stop your fall you know, on concrete, hard pavement. What do you think that's going to do to the palms of your hand? Wear some bike gloves, okay? They're not that expensive. Get get a pair of bike gloves. The weird part about bike gloves, though, is, you know, um, over time, <laughs> the, the tips of my fingers will be tan, but underneath it will be all light colored because the glove is kind of like blocking the sun. <laughs> it, it is kind of funny looking. Anyway, get some bike gloves, okay? They're, they're like uh, fingerless, fingertipless, fingerless gloves. <laughs> yeah, get some bike gloves. That would be good. Uh, neither does it say uh, a better helmet. It's always a good thing too. You might already have a helmet. You take a look at stuff like the X Needle helmets. Okay, that that's rated to 28 miles per hour. Not every bike helmet can do that, right? So uh, plus it's got the the cool lights in the front and the back. <laughs> Especially if you're a guy you're a guy that rides, you know, into the dawn and, and the dusk, or into the night. Uh, yeah, having those lights on the helmet helps out. People see you better. Yeah, blinks in the back too. So. Yeah, get a better helmet. What else would be a good uh, gift to get for somebody? Well, I think um, uh, so some people look at, you know, can I upgrade my mechanical brakes? That's a little tougher, okay? It takes a little bit of effort to have to install that, but if you're, you know, mechanical and you're not afraid to do it, yeah, switching over to hydraulic brakes would be kind of nice. Yeah, that would be... That would be a nice upgrade, yeah, but you know, those cost a little bit more, but well worth it, okay? <laughs> what else? A better saddle, since we should have said that during the suspension seat post. Uh, now, people have asked me recently, um, I would say within the last couple of months, um, what uh, saddle is the best saddle today, Russ? I go, I don't know, <laughs> but I can tell you some of the ones that I use. You know, the giddy up saddle is kind of cool, but it's, it's it's kind of polarizing. Not everyone likes the looks of that thing or even the feel of that thing. It's got those big wings, right? I call them wings. It's, it's what supports your your butt. But it does it's not, it's not really supported. It's kind of just floating there. So <clears throat> it kind of rock, when you rock around on it, it feel kind of funny. But I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. Uh, but better than that, the electric bike company has a nice extra wide saddle. Yeah, it's like $79. They have two. A uh, regular one and then an extra wide one. I think they're the same price, $79. I think they were, you know, during Black Friday or around that time period, they had them down to like $39. That was, I was so tempted to get a couple more of those. But uh, I've got a bunch of saddles and, um, uh, you know, most of them had been the Bikeroo. Uh, the Bikeroo started out good. Somehow it just, uh, they started to change the foam. It wasn't as squishy anymore. So it was more stiff. I liked the width of it. But I didn't like the stiffness of it. They dropped the price. I didn't. I didn't buy the ones with the springs. I bought what they call the elastomers, which is basically rubber springs. This is like rubber. It, you know, there's no pop bouncing because of that. Um, I'm not a big fan of the spring ones because I had a bike saddle before, not from Bikeroo, from some other company, and one of the one of the springs were kind of like different than the other, and so I always felt lopsided. So I, ever since then, I didn't want it. Plus, sometimes you hear the squeaking of the springs. So, yeah, spring type's not for me. The elastomer is the one to go with. Uh, I think 
if you go with the bike roo, they have they, the one that I use. I think they, they say it's made for indoor bikes, meaning exercise bikes. But, you know, it's the same saddle. It's just that the, there doesn't have a spring on it. Well, that wasn't as cushy anymore. So, I mean, they, they had dropped the price uh, depending on when you bought it. I think as low as maybe like $17.99 or $19.99 at one time. Uh, but usually, they, I think they're usually around $29, something like that. But it, it's, it's an option. But uh, today, I'd, I'd much prefer that electric bike company saddle that they sell. Uh, that one feels really good. <laughs> so anyways, if you can get a hold of one of those, that would be good. So anyways, what else? Uh, Velo has some nice saddles. If you can get their extra wide uh, uh, saddle. I, I don't know what model number this thing is, but Velo has a nice one too. Uh, my Ufree's had, had that. And, uh, so you can always buy from Ufree. So, but... Between the two, I, I still kind of prefer the electric bike company saddle. I think that one is pretty nice. So several people have bought it based on my recommendations before, and I think they, they like it. So, of course, sometimes I don't hear back from them after they get it. <laughs> so I don't know if they like it or they don't. But um, that's the one I would recommend. All right. Okay, what else should you get? How about some, uh, some uh, lubrication things for the chain, um, that type of stuff? Uh, yeah, chain lube. That, that might be something to consider. You know, I mean, it's a basic uh, stocking stuffer, as they say, right? That would be nice. You know, so some maintenance things. Yeah, that, that doesn't hurt to get. What else would be good? Um, let me think. Off the top of my head, what would be useful uh, that we haven't already talked about? Um, well, okay, if you want to really go all out, <laughs> maybe a, a car rack. Yeah, yeah. But see, the only thing with the car rack is you need a two-inch hitch. For many of these e-bike racks right so it would require you to actually get a two inch hitch installed to your vehicle and then get a bike rack <laughs> now that's really spending some money but you know what um even the folding bikes i stick it on the bike rack now I don't, I don't fold it and stick it in the car it's just too much headache so ever since getting the the uh the mo uh the <sighs> getting the bike rack uh from uh, magicycle uh i've been using it a lot yeah, so, I mean, I actually need that bike rack, you know, whenever I sell a bike to <laughs> and just transport, transport the bike to the police station. I always meet people at the police station when, when I sell them a bike. You got to transport the bike somehow because, you know, I, I, could, I could technically, I, I guess I could ride to the police station or something like that on the bike. But how would I get home after I sell the bike? <laughs> so I usually have to put on the, the bike rack, stick the bike on the bike rack and then drive it there. And of course, if you're planning on going further, you know, to go other places, you kind of need the bike rack. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier. So um, so as far as bike rack brands, I think the most popular ones are probably like the the uh, Hollywood rack. Yeah, that, that, that's a really nice one. Um, I think those are usually around the $500 ranges, but I've seen them discounted sometimes. Yeah, Magicycles, I don't, I don't know what the Magicycle one was. I think it was like $399, something like that. Sometimes I've seen that discounted a little bit too, so keep your eyes open for sales. So, and if you're gonna get any of the the Magic Cycle stuff, you know, use the affiliate link. Even though you're not buying a bike, uh, the affiliate link still works, <laughs> all right. And that that gives me a little bit of credit, and sometimes there's a discount for you too. So take a look. You know, never hurts to look at the affiliate link. Anyways, if, if any of these things that you want, if you just want to look at some of the things that I recommend, there's things that I have. Um, I have a lot of the Amazon links. Uh, on, on the description of my videos, usually it's in there, but you could also go to the, the russisright.blogspot.com site and it's all listed in there as well. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I've been saying that I'm going to expand that list to some other products that, um, you know, I, I, I thought would be good, uh, but, um, but may not have tried yet. I haven't done that. I've, all those things that are in there are typically things that I've tried before and, or maybe still have. So, uh, somebody asked me recently about the Bluetooth speaker that you see at the opening of all of the Russ is Right videos. You know, you see that fast moving bike going through this forest preserve and says Russ is Right comes up. There's a little round circle thing. Yeah, that's a Bluetooth speaker. And I bought that way early when I first started e-biking. Yeah, and it's even before I started recording stuff um, as, a, as the, as the e-bike became the main uh, purpose of the channel. Uh, I bought that to keep me company, okay? But when I started doing um, uh, e-bike videos specifically for YouTube, 
I haven't used that thing since because I'm talking as I'm writing. And I found that, you know, I thought that I would have this Bluetooth speaker to keep me company, you know, as I'm writing. So it won't be so boring just, just writing it by myself. And, but, you know, with the YouTube channel going on, I, you guys keep me company because as I'm making the videos, it's, it's like having a writing buddy. So talking to myself as I'm writing down the road, uh, to me, became more fun than just listening to the music. So, so a lot of times you don't see that Bluetooth speaker on any of the other bikes. And uh, I think this whole past season, I didn't even put it on any of the bikes. You know, I usually take everything off the bike uh, when I store it away um, for the season. And, and that, that bike was stored in the garage, the, the Rad Rover 5. <clears throat> I took the battery off of it. <clears throat> oh, hold on. Uh, took the battery off of it, stored the bike in the garage. Um, but I took off like the Bluetooth speaker and anything that had a battery in it, I would take it off and store it inside the house, which let me, let me talk about this real quickly too. We always go into, into tangents, but this, I think this one's an important one as it's in my brain. Okay. Where do you store your bike during the winter? Now, many times people store it in their garage. Okay. If you're going to store it in the garage, take the battery out of it. Yeah. Bring the battery inside. Now, a lot of people don't want to do that because they think about the, you know, battery fires and stuff like that. Well, it is, it is always a risk if you have any batteries in your, in, your, in your house, of course. But all of my batteries are in my house, okay? They're all inside. Uh, I have a couple bikes that are in the garage. I have the Magic Cycle Cruiser outside in the garage. I have the, the two, uh, two of the, uh, Jag the Jaguar Rundies from them are in the garage. Third one's inside the house. All the other bikes are in the house but all of the batteries are inside the house, okay? So, you know, as far as battery fires, if there was gonna happen, uh, yeah, my whole house would go up. <laughs> There's a lot of batteries in here. Uh, somebody asked me too about the battery bags for the fire. Yeah, the fireproof bags. That might be a good gift. Uh, Magicycle has them. There's, there's a whole bunch of other brands that, that sell them as well. Magicycle gave me two of them. Now, I asked for them not specifically as something to, to keep the fire away for, for, the, ba for the batteries, but for, for something so I could use to cushion the, 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 the battery when I was transporting them on the rear rack. That's why I really wanted that thing. Um, but they say, how effective is that, Russ? I go, for fire? I don't know. I've never had a battery fire. I have no idea. But I did watch one video uh, where a guy who was doing videos on... Um, radio controlled helicopters and things like that, you know, radio controlled cars. Um, he put those batteries, they're, they're lithium ion batteries as well. He stuck those inside one of these bags and then he did a test on it. He sealed it off, you know, he just zippered it up and then he, I, I don't know, I think he used a hammer or something like that to, to start the fire of the battery, it like impacted it. And then you could see this, this smoke start billowing and stuff like that and, uh, it contained it enough so that you could maybe uh, move the things out around that battery bag so that, that those things wouldn't catch on fire. It gave you time, but um, it only really worked when he had it all sealed off. In other words, he had the zippers all zippered up and everything. I just kept thinking, you know, if it's only zippers, what if the fire that's inside going on uh, burned up the zippers, then it would come out? So yeah, it just buys you some time to move things out of the way, but it doesn't stop the fire, okay? Um, l let me say this about these battery fires too. Um, you're never gonna stop them. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing with these, these uh, battery fires is that if, if, if one of the cells starts smoldering and starts on fire, it's gonna start burning the other cells. It just goes right down the line. So it goes and goes and goes and goes. It's just one battery goes off and then you think it's done, the next battery starts going off. And so there's a lot of little cells to, cre to create that one battery for your e-bike. So this is why the battery fires is a definitely hazard if it goes off. Now, we find a lot of times that the battery fires happen usually when you're charging or um, yeah, you know some, something outside of um, uh, usage, uh, the battery fires could happen, okay? Now, I did see one video where the guy was actually riding the bike and the bike caught on fire. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it does happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, okay? But uh, that's kind of rare. Um, it, it's really how good, how good was the uh, battery constructed and what kind of cells are they using, okay? It, I think the construction is more important than anything else. I mean, you could 
oh, it's got the, it's got name brand cells. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it really doesn't. I mean, if you short circuit that name brand cell, you're gonna start that fire. So I think it's the construction technique as well. So, anyways, that was my tangent of that. So these are some things to think about for Christmas time. <laughs> it's sad. <laughs> Talk about fires and, and on the topic of fires. Uh, but it's the reality, right? Um, I don't worry too much about the fires because I store it properly. I store my batteries properly. I don't store it at 100%. Like I said, you know, if you haven't already done it, try to bring those batteries down to 60 or 70% levels. It's probably safer for you to, to be that way. Hold on. Bring it down. That's what I do. I bring them down and then uh, I store it for the winter, okay? Now, <clears throat> let me say something else too. Some batteries in some bikes will automatically discharge over time. I, I've noticed that. Um, my electric bike company batteries sometimes do that and uh, uh, the Magicycle commuter bike does that. Um, actually, I sold that bike off too, by the way. Uh, one, one of you guys have bought the bike. I, I did tell him, I says, you know, this is one of the ones that will self-discharge over time. I don't know what causes it, but it's not the only bike that does it. And uh, so you want to kind of keep an eye on that. If it starts going down, then uh, you might want to charge it up a little bit. You know, give it a little charge here and there. You don't have to charge it to full maximum. Just give it a little charge up. Um, the battery meter on the uh, motorcycle commuter bike, not the world's ac most accurate battery meter. I mean, it, it, it'll show full five bars out of five even if you've ridden it like to the point where it's halfway done. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to tell what you have in terms of, of battery on that. So, uh, but I know it does self-discharge because I've seen it do it. Um, the Velatric uh, T1 also self-discharges. So I think, what else was, there was a couple others that have some, something in it causes it to kind of continually usage or something and it just kind of discharges over time. So. So you want to check it um, during the winter too to see how's your battery doing. You know, I mean, is it down to 25%? If it is, give it a little charge up. Yeah, you don't have to charge it all the way up. Just charge it to 50, 60, 70%, something like that, and then let it, you know, take it off again. So you're, you're always better to take the batteries out of the bike in long-term storage than leaving it on. Uh, but some of the bikes, it's kind of hard to take it off. So then, then you just leave it. I mean, but if, you have, if it has the ability to be removed, you might want to reach move it. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. <laughs> we went off into a tangent, but while things are fresh in my brain, I have to let you know. Otherwise, I forget, as, as you know. So um, I don't think any of my videos, really, when I start out with this is the topic, stays on the topic. It kind of goes all over the place. I actually had a guy recently says, you talk too much. He says, you talk too much, and, and uh, you know, you repeat yourself. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I know it. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> I know it, but you know, all of these things are not scripted. It's just me talking as I'm uh, thinking them through things. I talk it and I tell you, that's, that's how I do my videos. So, but um, yeah, I kind of keep it like, like if you were here with me, I would be talking to you. That's how I do my videos. Anyways, if you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already done so, get some stuff for Christmas, <laughs> either for yourself or for somebody else. Talk to you guys next time.